Morgan Stanley survived the meltdown, repaid TARP, and has a new CEO waiting in the wings. Its toughest job, however, may be getting its new army of brokers to work together. Gigi Stone takes a look at two of the firm's top brokers, Greg Vaughn and Mark Curtis. Smith Barney's Curtis topped this year's registered rep broker survey. Morgan Stanley's Vaughn was number one in the Barron survey. And now they're teaming up, commuting between Palo Alto and Menlo Park, California. The way they think about this process is slightly different than the way Morgan Stanley folks have been trained, where capital markets was kind of what we talked about, and investing is what we talked about. This is exactly how new CEO James Gorman sees it working, getting the best of both brokers. After the crisis is over, the market isn't going to pay for trading, and that more predictable revenue sources are going to have a higher valuation going forward. And that's really the, the, the move into retail. Still, the list of failed Wall Street marriages is long. Morgan Stanley, Dean Witter, Shearson Lehman, Shearson Lehman, E.F. Hutton. Morgan, however, thinks it has a secret weapon, a massive retail-only trading floor in Purchase, New York, with 250 traders. Plans are to add as many as 150 more. Kevin Morano, co-head of Capital Markets at the Joint Venture, explains how it works. Every big financial advisor in this firm has somebody in this room responsible for covering them, just like any institutional client would do. Our clients are important at this firm, and sometimes um, the, the secret was so large that, uh, that what we did for a living, I think, uh, was not such an important part of the firm. This merger could boost margins 6 to 8 percent, says Hintz. That is if management can solve the problems inherent in bringing two firms together. All of those are ahead of us in the integration of Morgan Stanley. Gigi Stone, Bloomberg News.